Hello and welcome to another Amber Roots devlog. There's a variety of new things to go over, so let's jump right in. One small change is I added a tween effect that makes the player sprite look like it's breathing, and I'm pretty happy with it. I need to see if it's something I'm going to want to add to Amberlings as well. Not sure yet since Amberlings have idle animations already, but here you can see a Snally with the breathing effect on the left and one without it on the right. So let me know what you think, I'm a little torn. I also changed up the UI quite a bit. I really wanted to keep the notebook aesthetic, but I wanted a better distribution of the screen space, so I made a landscape notebook. And I made some new tabs for navigation and buttons for interaction. I updated all the screens in the game to use this new system and modified some code to make certain things cleaner and more streamlined. So far I'm really happy with the results. I think the notebook feel is still very present, but now each UI screen feels a lot more flexible. I also think that overall the UI feels more cohesive and polished. The buttons feel like they pop out the right amount and there's much less blank unused space in the UI, at least in the more finished screens, as some still need work. I really gotta thank some of the people in my Discord for this too because they gave some awesome feedback as I was experimenting with this. So thank you all a ton. I hope everyone likes the UI design. So far, I'm really happy with it. Another thing I worked on for this update was object pooling and object spawners. If you're not familiar, object pooling is the concept of having objects stored in a game scene and being able to activate and deactivate them at will, as opposed to constantly instantiating and destroying objects. The result looks the same from the outside, but is a much cleaner and efficient way of doing things. So I created an object pooler that makes pools of certain objects, and to use them, I made some object spawners that spawn and despawn objects based on player distance. Currently that distance is super short as I was testing them, but all of these variables are very easily changed. So when the player gets close, some objects are activated from the pool and placed randomly around the spawner, and as the player gets far, those objects are deactivated. Deactivated objects also check the ground so that they don't end up spawning in the air somewhere. This is working really well, and I'd really like to expand the functionality in the future to include things like rare spawns and respawn timers. The main reason I wanted to add object pooling and spawners during this update was because I wanted to have certain items that the player could pick up. Now, most harvestables will require the use of an amberling to get. That includes stuff like cutting down a tree or breaking a rock. But I wanted to have some smaller harvestables that could get picked up by the player, so if the player ever finds themselves in a situation where maybe they don't have an amberling to help them, they can still get items out of the wilderness and maybe make enough money to get the amberling they need. I'll likely make it where amberlings are better at getting these easy harvestables too though. Maybe they get more than one for example. For now though, this is working great, and I think it ties into the main topic of this video, the crafting system. In Amber Roots, crafting will be done entirely by the Amberlings. So whether you need to make some bread or brew up a potion, you'll need an Amberling who can do the task. You'll also need a crafting station for the Amberling to work at, and each crafting station will be different. For this video, I made the alchemy station. This one was super fun to put together. I made some potion sprites, some small books, and a mortar and pestle for it. So if you interact with the station, it brings up the crafting interface. It also adds the crafting interface to the main navigation tabs at the top here, so you can navigate between it and your other menus without having to unpause, which I think is pretty convenient. Looking back at the crafting UI, here is where your Amberling can be instructed to make items. The first thing you'd want to do is assign an Amberling to a station. Once that's done, here in the station info section, you can see a few other options. It also shows some important details about the station like its level and how many users it can have. So now let's wait for the Amberling to come to work, and once the Amberling reaches the station it's assigned to, it'll hang out there waiting for an order. Okay, now that that's done, let's take another look at the crafting UI. If you click the new craft button, it will take you to the recipe screen, which can also be accessed from the navigation tabs at the top. Here you'll see recipes relevant to the type of station you're currently working with. Right now there's only two recipes, but adding new ones is super easy since each recipe is just a scriptable object that creates an item using other items. When you hover over a recipe, it tells you the items produced and the ingredients required on the right side of the screen. 
As you can see, I don't have any ingredients right now, so let's plan on making one of each of the potions by clicking on them, and then we'll go grab some ingredients. Once clicked, they'll get added to the crafting queue, so you can see what the current craft is and what else is queued up. Once the current craft is done, it will get removed and the queue will continue. You can also move items up and down in the queue, change how many times to craft them, and remove them completely. Okay, so let's go grab some ingredients. Now that we have enough ingredients, let's take another look. In the crafting UI, there is an input and output button. Those are the containers attached to each crafting station. We want to put ingredients we collected in the input container, and when our potions are done, they'll go in the output container. We can drop off our ingredients using the interface like this, or we can exit out and physically interact with the containers from out here. Both the input and output containers can be interacted with like this. Now that we have all the ingredients we need in there, you can see our Amberling has started working on our item. A progress bar shows up when you focus on the crafting station, and some particle effects show that work is getting done. The crafting UI also shows the current progress. Each item has an adjustable craft time, so some items will take longer to craft than others. Once it's done, we can check the output container, and there's our potion. You can even move items around in the crafting queue mid-craft. This will cause the Amberling to switch over to the new item, but no progress will be lost on the item that was being worked on before. If the output container gets full, the Amberling will halt its work, so you have to keep an eye on that. I'm thinking about adding a little pop-up over the container when it's full too, so that that can alert the player to clear it out. That about wraps up how the crafting system will work. If you ever played games like RimWorld or Dwarf Fortress, it's heavily inspired by that, where you assign tasks to be done and wait for your colonists, or Amberlings in this case, to finish them. I'm really happy with the system so far, and adding new stations and recipes is going to be super easy. Just a matter of making some new models and textures and item combinations. I also want to give a special shout out to my Patreons. Thank you so much for your support, it means so much to me. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, the link to the Patreon is down in the video description. But even if you don't, know that I appreciate so much everyone who watches these videos. If you want to see more of Amber Roots, remember to subscribe. And if you want to discuss all things Amber Roots and give me some feedback on some things, make sure you check out the Discord. And as always, thank you so much for watching.